Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michelle Brittany with Fanbase Press. I am in the IDW booth here at San Diego Comic Con. 2019, and with me today is Chris James. Welcome. Hey, How are you? Good. Thanks. <laughs> you know, we're all surviving. It's the last day. It is. Uh, you look amazing somehow after all of it, so I'm Aww. glad you held up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. A little bit of sleep goes a long yeah. way, doesn't it? <laughs> Definitely. Uh, cool. Well, we're, we're actually here today because you have a fantastic, brand new, hardcover edition of Sons of <laughs> Chaos out. Uh, for those who haven't read it yet or gotten a free issue when they were at WonderCon earlier this year, can you tell us a little bit about the story? Sure. It's uh, a massive layered story about a lot of characters who are in positions of leadership that kind of exposes their personal agenda that sort of allowed a revolution to occur in 1821 and that revolution ended up stimulating the fall of the Ottoman Empire, returned Greece to freedom and sort of defined Western Europe to be what it is today. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Could you tell me a little bit why you chose that particular time period? I, I know when I saw the cover, I immediately thought, oh, we're, we're into ancient right. Greece. So yeah. can you tell me what drew you to that particular war? Well, I think, so I've traveled a lot, right? And mm -hmm. I've spent time in Greece and I spent time all over Europe throughout my life. And I never knew that there was a revolution there. I didn't know that Greece was not a free nation mm -hmm. up until about 200 years ago. And so the implications of the war really defined what it is and yet we know about the French Revolution we know yeah. that and that was 50 years prior and that defined certain elements of Europe but it didn't really put a, a stop to the spread of the more the, the Eastern cultures that mm -hmm. were starting to move west and take over more and more of, of Europe yeah. and so it's so fresh and new that it's like you might as well know that this happened uh, uh, what you, what drew you also to historical fiction? Uh, fiction, because I'm I'm a big fan of historical uh, historical stories. What what drew you to that genre? I think as I've gotten older, if I'm uh, investing my time into reading any sort of fiction, it's it's harder and harder for me to want to spend the time. Uh, learning about things that are totally fan fantasy driven. Mm -hmm. uh, so so I'm drawn to, to be learning while I'm reading mm -hmm. and if and, and anything that's historic is still fictional. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're getting an account that's not firsthand. It's told uh, in a subjective manner based on who's telling the story. Mm -hmm. And so I think that even documentaries are kind of fiction. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'd rather do it in a manner that I am engaged and I'm learning and stimulating me to become more aware. And it's it's much more challenging and, and fulfilling because you become an investigative reporter to yes. really try to ascertain the reality of what happened. And did you have, uh, was there uh, a bounty full of information for you? Or? No. Okay. So how did <laughs> yeah, you get yeah. over that hurdle? Okay, so initially there's maybe th less than 15 uh solid resources in the English language mm -hmm. and so and they're all written by different people from different places and all with their own uh, opinions and agendas so I started reading the initial elements and realized they were all conflicting mm -hmm. nothing added up and so then I had to go further and so I had to begin I spent time in Greece and started to get things translated and mm -hmm. I'd go to library basements and wait for somebody to try to help mm -hmm. me understand something and mm -hmm. and then I'd cross-check things and things still didn't add up and then I'd run to look at like a place where a, a battle happened or someone was living in a cave and I'd check it out and get the understanding of it and then I tried to piece together what was real and what was not mm -hmm. uh, so yeah it was it was an elongated process of un, unhealthy determination uh, <laughs> So it sounds like you actually spent a lot of time on this. It sounds like it's a it's a great passion project to you. Um, can you tell me uh, just what would you like people to get from the book when they when they pick sure. it up? Sure. What, what what do you want What do you want to resonate with them? First, I want them to enjoy it and go, "Oh wow, this is <laughs> such a good story." I think what I would like is that you see the human element in term in terms of what these people are going through and the reality that that war is not about what you're told 
mm-hmm. and please look further because mm-hmm. we're, we're sort of victim of a media that sells us slogans mm-hmm. and somehow those slogans manage to convince us very quickly that mm-hmm. it's totally fine to justify murder on mm-hmm. a professional level. Yeah. And this story really shows what is going on in the minds of the people and how they trick the world into following them in something that has nothing to do with what you're being told. Yeah. So I would like us as a, as a species to start to become more aware mm-hmm. that it's still murder. And mm-hmm. most of the time you're going to someone else's land to yes. murder them. Mm-hmm. And why are we so easy to happy to do that based on like, oh yeah, yeah, we don't, yeah, mm-hmm. we don't care about those people. Go kill them. Yeah. Uh, because we do. And I want to humanize uh, mm-hmm. the reality that we're humans on both sides. Yes. Because we're in a very uh, trendy space in our culture uh, mm-hmm. to fall into a trap of polarization. And it seems to be spreading. Um, so I'd like them to start thinking we're all humans here. Even the bad guy is very human and has a psychology that is really just trying to gain love for himself and and become uh, find a self worth mm-hmm. through the unfortunately the bad guy is doing it at the expense of others. Right. Uh, so. And how to, did you find it very challenging to, to to really try to define that it isn't just black and white that there are a lot of shades of gray? Absolutely. Uh, with everything. Mm-hmm. I don't care what you did last night. If I hear the story, there's a lot of shades of gray that you're not telling me. Mm-hmm. And that's the same when I tell a story to my mom. Mm-hmm. And, and and so each time you go up the chain to the mm-hmm. news, to the history, to anything, you're getting a, a, a worse and worse version of, of the truth. Mm-hmm. So, yes, these stories, uh, the, the storylines in the book, everyone who appears to be a bad guy, you get to understand their psychology. And even in moments you feel... Uh, for them, mm-hmm. uh, and then they do something off, and you oh wait, I shouldn't be feeling for them. Right. You know, kind of in the way people sometimes feel for the Joker. Yeah, it's a similar okay. type of a thing, I think. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> is there more Sons of Chaos stories uh, in in your mind that you would well, like to write? Or yeah, so my initial outline mm-hmm. uh, filled up 270 pages of writing. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that was in like thick writing Mm -hmm. and trying to get that to fit a book that's why even still the book is 200 pages and I probably got through about 40 pages of that 270 page outline Mm -hmm. so it's so layered and it could go on for you know decades Mm -hmm. beyond my existence Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody chose to so uh, we'll probably see more Sons of Chaos stories. I mean, there's then. a I'm, chance. I'm hoping. Yeah, if, if, if there's a demand, then yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so right. hopefully there is. Okay, and um, what other upcoming projects do you have in the works that <laughs> yeah. maybe you can share with us? Sure. I have uh, a, a movie in development, actually, that is a script I've been uh, writing for the past six years. Mm-hmm. And it's a true story about a, a boy who was born with a heart defect and not supposed to survive. When he was three, he had his third open heart surgery and had a, a full right hemisphere stroke and went paralyzed on his left side. So now he had the heart problem, couldn't move, everybody ruled him out, and uh, he ended up having a full recovery that was stimulated by his relationship with the dolphin. So it's sort of my version of E.T., uh, my most obsessed movie as a child, uh, but instead of an alien, it's based on a, a, on a boy and a dolphin. Uh, and what is the name of that? The name's Unconditional. And it's actually, there's a whole bunch of information already about it on my, oh, my website. Okay. Uh, it's at chrisjames.com. And, okay. But uh, but that story stimulated a nonprofit that I help oh. run now. And oh, okay. the nonprofit, what we do is we take dolphins that can't survive in the wild. We've acquired mm-hmm. dolphins from Swim With Dolphin programs and removed them from that. Mm-hmm. They don't now uh, perform or do tricks for money. Mm-hmm. They do nothing in their life but live and uh, we created a therapy program between them and special mm-hmm. needs kids. That is wonderful. And what is the name of that organization? Island, that's Island Dolphin Care. Okay. And uh, again, their website's IDC Key Largo, Island Dolphin Care Key Largo. Okay. Uh, but yeah, is that check dot it out. Com, dot org? Dot org. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's in Key Largo. If anybody ever wants to hang out and have a good day with dolphins in a very sweet, non exploitative manner mm-hmm. uh, at a cool non profit, uh, you're welcome to come. That yeah. sounds really exciting, actually, yeah, and, and cool. a very worthy, worthy organization. Every once in a while, I find a way to spend time doing something not mm-hmm. totally useless. Uh, I'm trying to do that more as I get older. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. so. and, and it makes the world a better place. So. Hopefully, right? Yes. Uh, Thank you so much yeah. for your story as well, because 
hearing hearing more of what you're, you're involved in it fills out even more who is Chris James oh, behind thanks. the story. So yeah. I appreciate that. Thanks for being here. <laughs> <laughs> and where can people find you on social media if they don't happen to be on the floor today? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, all, all of my things, I somehow got the Chris James title, but James is spelled J-A-Y-M-E-S. Yes. So at Facebook, it's Chris James. It, at Instagram, it's Chris James, one word, no hyphens. Mm -hmm. uh, my website is chrisjames.com. You know, so it's all the... Yeah, all just me. Yeah, yeah. Very fortunate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Uh, yeah, totally. Um, so, yeah, and uh, if anybody has any interest or wants any help, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to send books to anybody in need if you can't, if you have, you know, it's not a cheap book. And if you mm -hmm. tell me, hey, I'd really love to have it, but I'm, 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 I've got kids and I can't afford it and I'm working, send me a mail and I'll send you a book. Oh, that's very kind of sure. you, and that, that's very helpful for those that would like to be able to read this story yeah, and, so. and can't. <laughs> yeah, so. totally. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for your time yeah, today. It's you. been a real pleasure speaking yeah. with you. No, you guys are wonderful. Thanks for <laughs> having me. Oh, you're <laughs> welcome. This is Michelle with Fan Base Press here at San Diego Comic-Con, and if you like this interview and want to see more, please uh, come and visit us at fanbasepress.com.